Hello and welcome to this quick video on the new COBOL code refactoring tools that will be available in the Microfocus Visual COBOL and Enterprise Developer 6.0 release. My name is Scott Nielsen, I'm the Product Manager for Visual COBOL and I'll be taking you through the tools. I'm going to be using Visual Studio to demonstrate these to you. Um, but the same tools are available in Eclipse. They might look a little bit different in the way that you initiate them, but ultimately it's the same set of tools that you've got access to in either IDE. And to illustrate the way that the refactoring tools work, we're going to use a sample program that we've got here in Visual Studio. I'll open it up in a moment. Um, it's deliberately simple code um, because I want us to be able to see the behavior of the refactoring tool so we can understand how they operate on a simple program before we then apply it to something a little bit more complex. So let me just walk you through this program very quickly so we can get a sense of what it does. It won't take you too long to realize we've got here a main program um, which is setting up a couple of input parameters and calling a sub program which I'm sure you can um, ascertain is a very rudimentary calculator and it's that calculator subroutine that we're going to apply the refactoring tools to and here indeed is that subroutine um, we've got some working storage items um, the linkage ones are probably of more interest here we've got an opcode uh, we've got the operands and the result uh, information here that's all passed in the procedure division using statement We've got a main section which evaluates the opcode and um, farms off that to the necessary section in the code here. And it's, as you can see, pretty simple, straightforward stuff here, deliberately so. OK, so the first thing I'd like to show you is just to have a look at where the refactoring tools are actually located. You can initiate them from different places in the IDE, but let's see them all grouped together. I'm just going to select a bit of code here, go to the edit menu, refactor, and you can see the tools that we've got available spring up on the menu there. Let me just walk you through these very quickly. So first of all, the rename one, pretty self-explanatory. And although renaming fields is seemingly a very you know, basic thing to do, it's actually something that um, is really important in the terms of refactoring and, and why you want to go about refactoring code. You know, very frequently you'll come across poorly named fields and you'll want to change them but um, may be hesitant to do so because you're not really sure about the impact, you know, especially when these fields that you're renaming or sections that you're renaming in the code may be used elsewhere or may be contained within copybooks. So the rename refactoring tool takes care of a lot of that complexity for you and we'll see that later. We then got two groups of similar um, refactoring, but the different prefixes here. So we've got a, a group um, prefix with create and a group prefix with extract. Let's just explain the difference between those two verbs. When we're talking about creating something, in this case a program, but in, in different ways, we're going to be extracting business logic from the, the source. Um, and creating something new from it, but the source will be left unchanged. In the extract um, group, not only are we creating something new, but we're going to be modifying the, the source, the origin of that business logic, and updating it to refer to the newly created thing. So we'll see both of these in action in a moment. OK, so let's start off by taking a look at the rename refactoring tool. It's a pretty basic use case of refactoring, but still incredibly useful to developers. And some of the constructs in COBOL can make actually renaming fields a little bit more complex. And it's useful to have an automated tool to do the job for you. Um, so let's look at an example of that. We're going to modify or rename a field in a copybook here, a copybook that's shared not only in this program, but in other programs in the project. Uh, let's rename this opcode field to be something else. So the way you invoke it in Visual Studio is to use the rename, context menu, um, I type what I want the new name to be here. You can see that reference below as well. There's a reference to it there, it gets changed automatically. 
um, you get to pick the scope of where you want the change to be made and I'm going to preview the changes so we can see all the locations in the code copybook gets changed of course but all the main programs that are referencing it to and there are other actually more complex scenarios than this this is a fairly fairly basic example of it but there are more complex things that this tool will take care of for you as well best thing about it is once I've clicked apply well first of all we're notified that changes will occur in copybooks and if you've got programs using those copybooks that aren't in the solution then you'd have to take that into account of course but let's just continue to proceed here and we can see the change that is made so this will compile I know but the best thing about this if for whatever reason you change your mind um, you can undo the change um, pretty easily even though it's in several files that have been modified on disk if I click undo um, we can undo that global rename there so let me just click that and we're back to how we started uh, a couple of minutes ago now you can rename lots of different identifiers fields sections and other things too uh, and it's a really useful tool for developers okay so why don't we now look at some more advanced refactoring tools and let's start with the use case where we're extracting business logic from the program but leaving the original source code untouched um, and the bit of code that we're going to um, refactor today is the add operation you can see from the main routine we've got this evaluate calls a do add section so we'll scroll down to do add um, that calls some sort of helper routine and then it farms off the business logic to yet another section below but we're only talking about four or five lines of code here all told so um, let's invoke um, the routine the refactor tool that's going to extract this into a new program this section into a new program so go to the edit menu refactor and then create program from section we'll have a look at these other two options in a moment so we're presented with a little dialogue that shows us the name of the, the or the section of code that's highlighted it's going to be extracted and um, we're given an option to rename the the source file that's going to be created let's just create that give that a few moments and we should see that file added to the solution area and here's the program that's been created and if you're familiar with the an analyzer tools themselves you might recognize some of the comments that are created in the source code here um, this is the new program that represents that section of code that was extracted now it it looks uh, a little untidy in this early release of the software I'm using but you can be sure we'll tidy things up in future um, let's scroll down a little bit just to see how it works so we've got the um, the fields that were used by the section of code they're extracted here and there's some more of those below okay there's a couple of extra fields here that are part of the pattern used by the generation tools which we'll see in a moment and some more examples of fields used by the uh, the extraction code here now that looks a little bit busy um, but if you examine this it's actually quite straightforward because we have a section of um, input parameters that are passed into the program we've got the operand the opcodes and the operands for example and we've got um, a group of fields that are output okay and these are passed in to the program in the procedure division using statement from here there's um, some code that's going to unpack those parameters and move them into working storage some of that uh, on input and on exit is handled by a couple of helper routines below okay so that's sort of tidied away here in these two sections and then um, if we go back up to the main section here is the main bit of business logic that's been extracted you scroll down if you recall we had the first line of code was calling out to a helper routine and then it called the main section and here's that main section extracted here so they do their work as they were doing before and then the output um, is packaged up into the linkage parameters so that the caller of this standalone program now can now uh, add two numbers together okay not very complicated um, but it is generating a you know a reasonable amount of code the good thing is 
that pattern that it applies here is the same regardless of how complex the code is. So creates input parameters, output parameters, and a procedure division using statement, unpacks those parameters on entry and um, updates those parameters on exit. So with this program now, it's a standalone program. You could um, write some test cases for this. You could create an API. You can do a number of things. OK, but let's now take a look at the other refactorings that we could have applied here. Now, we have a couple of other approaches we can apply when we want to take business logic from one program and extract it out to create another. And the one I want to show you here is where we are capturing the code path that leads to the calculation or indeed the computation of a particular field we're interested in. And in this case, if we look at our add calculator, we're adding these two fields together and putting the results in this field. And it's this calculation that we want to pull out and create a program for. So to do that, let's go back to the refactor menu. And in this instance, we'll use the create program from computation. We can change the program name if we want. And we're identified here the, the field that's of interest to us in the program. Let's click create. Programs added to the project. This uh, commentary you've seen here before in the previous example, but actually it's quite a bit simpler, the generated program, just the fields that are necessary to um, call this section of code that we've extracted. And if we scroll down, we can see the original evaluate statement in the main section is still present, but only the code path that gets us to the add operation we're interested in. Anything else is effectively going to appear as a no op. And if we scroll further down, um, here is the code that you'll probably recognize from before and the actual statement of interest um, are highlighted here. Now, you may notice that actually there was also another uh, statement in the original program. Let's go back to it here. And here it is. And you can see in the add, do add main section, there's a, a line of code here to set a result code here. And if we go back to the code that we've extracted, it's not included in this program. And that's because it actually has no bearing on the result uh, of this field. So it doesn't get included. Whereas this call to an external program, which uses the operands that were passed in, that is included because you don't know if the fields are actually going to get modified as a result of the call to that program. So that's included, but any other code that is identified as being redundant is not part of the included program. Now there's one further option we've got available to us if we want to extract some business logic from one program and create a new program from it. And in this case, what we can do is extract the code path from the application that would execute when a certain field in the program contains a specified value. And the example I'll give you here is we're going to use the op code as the field we're interested in. And we want the code path that will be executed when that op code contains the value add. OK, so that obviously relates to the add arithmetic operation. So let's see how Analyzer gets on with that. So bring up the refactor menu. We're going to use create program from condition here. OK, the condition uh, uh, create program from condition dialog appears. It tells us the name of the field that we're interested in and I can put the value plus here. So uh, extract all the statements that would execute when that uh, field contains that value. Let's click create. And you'll see um, similar looking code to before. We've got the working storage, the linkage parameters that are created for us here as well. Um, uh, let me just scroll down a little bit here, first of all, just to point out the code the main business logic that's been called out. This will be uh, familiar to you. We've looked at this before. But you'll notice that the result code on this occasion is included in the resulting program because that would have been code that would have, would have been executed. So it appears 
in the extracted code. The main section of code here is just really responsible for unpacking the input parameters and moving them into the working storage and on return it's um, packaging up uh, the working storage parameters and putting them in the result code. That's all that's really going on there. Okay, so three types of refactoring operation used to create a brand new program without modifying the existing source code. Okay, so we've looked at uh, refactoring tools that leave the original program untouched but create a new program from it. Now let's look at a refactoring tool that not only creates the new program, but updates the original to refer to the newly created program. Now we'll stick with the add arithmetic operation that we've been working on so far. I can invoke this new refactoring tool again from the refactor menu. We've got extract section to program here. That's the one we're going to invoke. We can also do that within the editor on this occasion. We've got the editor quick actions in Visual Studio. We'll bring up this extract section to new program. Okay, we get a, a, a highlighted code that we're going to extract. And we get a preview of two things. First of all, the new program that's going to be created from it. And the original program uh, is a diff showing us how it's going to be modified. So rather than studying that, let's just apply this. Now the program that's been created is going to look an awful lot like um, the program that was created when we did the create section refactoring. And we looked at that earlier on and we'll see that we get linkage parameters that are uh, unpacked on entry to the program and uh, um, output parameters that are set up once the main business logic is performed. If you remember, there are a couple of little helper routines down here to do that for you. If we go back to the original program, we can see the add section has been updated here to reflect those linkage parameters. Now, there's a lot more code here than was originally extracted from the program because it's setting up all these different parameters and so forth. So it kind of perhaps looks a little bit uh, clumsy here, but actually, um, really even if that program was much more complicated and the, the code that we've extracted was much more complicated this approach here really doesn't change or this pattern that the analyzer tool is applying doesn't really change and it's going to kind of look the same regardless of the complexity of the code okay with that let's have a quick recap we've taken a step-by-step -step look at a variety of new refactoring tools available in the visual cobol and enterprise developer 6.0 release from renaming identifiers through to advanced program slicing options. There are a variety of other tools for you to get your hands on to help you prepare and undertake more extensive refactoring on real world applications. Keep an eye out for more videos in this series where we'll show you how you can write automated unit tests against the extracted code and deploy as RESTful APIs running inside a Docker container. Thanks for watching.